Hi, welcome everyone. This is the type of high-tech monitoring equipment that will soon be deployed in the three major railway lines in Nigeria. These lines include the Abuja Kaduna Railway, Lagos Ibado Railway, and Wari Itape Railway. These high-tech integrated monitoring systems include high-sensitive sensors that can detect the slightest intrusion movements along the railway tracks and even breakages on the tracks. We all know that breakage on the track can lead to derailment of the train, especially when it is on high speed. So these systems not only detect them but signals the command center where they can take appropriate measures like deploying a maintenance team or other monitoring teams to investigate further. They can also stop the trains on time if they feel there's a need. Before we go further, remember to subscribe to our channel and enable notification. Thanks. These high-tech railway monitoring systems are in use in many railway networks abroad. In fact, they should have deployed them before commissioning of the railway lines. According to the Minister of Transportation, the award of the contract for the deployment of these high-tech railway monitoring systems didn't receive the urgency it deserved since he made the proposal last year. The 3 billion naira contract was proposed by the Ministry of Transportation after October last year. That was after the first time that there was an incident along Abuja Kaduna Railway. Government bureaucracy and red tape can sometimes hurt the ease of doing business. The contract should have been given utmost priority because apart from safety, these assets were built with millions of dollars. So if it costs about $6 million to protect assets that cost a lot more, including lives of course, it is totally worth it. But all hope is not lost as they will now be deployed on or before July this year when the first incident happened along the Abuja Kaduna Railway, they should have taken the monitoring of the railway lines seriously. It's a pity that it took until now that some people have been affected, some are even still missing, for them to take the issue seriously. Working alongside the high-tech integrated monitoring systems are drones and helicopters. As a matter of fact, the police just took delivery of high-endurance drones from France. The manufacturer equally came to Nigeria to train personnel that will use them. These UAVs include the ALTI Transition, which has a range of up to 150 kilometers, and it can stay in the air for up to 14 hours. Of course, it can take off vertically anywhere, so deployment will be easy. There's also the Elister Orion Advanced UAS, this one can stay in the air for more than 24 hours and can fly as high as 100 meters in a fixed position. So these drones will not only help along the railway lines, but it can also be deployed in other areas that are prone to disturbances. These are ready to be deployed immediately for monitoring of assets and intelligence gathered will be passed to people on the ground to direct them appropriately. Actually, they need many of these UAS to monitor the vast Nigerian borders. The customs will definitely purchase them when they see the benefits of these drones. That's if they don't have them already. When you can see a wide area at all times, night and day, it will lead to operatives moving in a proactive manner instead of the current reactive manner. And we all know how expensive the reactive manner can be. When operatives are well equipped with state-of-the-art gadgets and they continue to fail in their operations, it means it's no longer a matter of lack of equipment but incompetence. Although it isn't a matter of incompetence on their part, because this type of event can happen in any part of the world, but when it happens two times in a space of five months, many will start to question their capability. Remember the first time it happened in October and after train services resumed, there was an escort from the air. It was known at the time that it wasn't sustainable, 
That's why they should have quickly deployed other sustainable methods to improve safety. Right now, Kaduna is somewhat isolated from Abuja. It's not easy to get to Kaduna from Abuja by road. The railway line is out and yet to be fixed, and two airlines recently suspended flights to Kaduna because of the incident at the airport a few days ago. Anyway, the NRC and other agencies should learn a lot from what is happening. All the knowledge gathered should be applied on other railway networks, especially new ones that are under construction and those that will be built in the future. These safety and monitoring systems should be deployed before train services can start on new railway lines. It is hoped that it will finally bring to an end to these types of incidents along the Abuja Kaduna Railway. When people ride on trains, they have utmost confidence in the safety that the trains provide, unlike road transport. That confidence will continue to erode once these incidents continue to happen. The NRC needs to cultivate confidence in passengers so that ridership can improve, thereby making them more money. According to the Minister of Transportation, the Abuja Kaduna Railway makes on average 300 million naira per month. The management should be working on how to grow the service and possibly double the earnings because they need that money to repay loans that were taken to construct the railway infrastructure. The Abuja Kaduna Railway and Lagos Ibado Railway were partly financed by the Chinese. The Wari Itape Railway was 100% financed by the Nigerian government. So NRC needs the train service to be running all the time, including at night, if there are passengers, so they can repay these loans quickly. Yes, a lot of people don't want the trains to be running at night because of safety. But if there is reasonable safety, because safety can be guaranteed 100%, the trains should run. The economy shouldn't grind to a halt because of disturbances, and there is so much money to be made. And not forgetting the fact that this is the main advantage of trains. They have a dedicated track, they don't experience traffic, they should definitely be running services even if it's midnight, unless they aren't passengers, you know. On the other hand, not many people will like to drive on the highway by midnight. Our society should never give in to problems that are surmountable. Rather, we should find solutions to them. The good guys should always win the bad guys, you know. Also, in the early stages when getting to Kaduna from Abuja by road started getting difficult, many people started riding the trains because of safety. But there's now a question mark on that safety because of recent events. All agencies should work together to restore confidence of riders and improve safety. Concerning the recent incident in Kaduna, kudos to the operatives that arrived there on time to help people. They did a very good job. But they should take up all the leads they have and pursue them to the logical conclusion. They should make use of all the high-tech equipment that is available to Nigerian security agencies right now to bring this to an end. Since the launch of the Waterways Protection Infrastructure Project, otherwise known as the Deep Blue Project, Nigeria has taken delivery of more high-tech and advanced equipment. There's also the Geospatial Intelligence Data Center and the Falcon Eye Monitoring Center. They should leverage all these infrastructure to put stories like this to an end. You can check out this video to learn more about the Deep Blue project and the game-changing effects in the Gulf of Guinea. Alright, we hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like, subscribe to our channel and enable notification as well. Till next time, bye-bye.